Hello, and welcome to Data Science Wednesday. My name is Tessa Jones, and I'm a data scientist with Decisive Data. Today we're going to be talking about cluster analysis and the basic techniques that we use to determine clusters. One of the more common reasons that we use clustering in a business setting is to understand what customers are related to each other, called customer segmentation, for various different reasons. So for the sake of simplicity, let's have an example to play with. Let's pretend that we are pet store owners. And we want to know who are cat people, and who are dog people, and who are fish people. Let's have some fun with it. So let's start with centroid clustering. This is one of the more common methodologies that are used. So what is a centroid? What is this whole idea? So basically, in this methodology, you choose the number of clusters that, you're, that you want. So let's pretend that we want cat people and dog people. So we want two clusters. So we say that, and then basically we determine a centroid for each cluster, and if you belong to that cluster, it basically determined, is determined by how far away you are from that centroid. So for example, let's say in the beginning of an algorithm, you would randomly choose centroids. So we're just gonna put one here, and we're gonna put one here. So these two points belong to this centroid because they're closer to this one than they are to that one. And likewise with these three. They belong to this centroid because they're closer to this one than they are to that one. This one's kind of marginal. It's a little bit closer to this guy, so we're going to draw the line right there. So now we have two clusters. And so we're going to recalculate where our centroids are based on the points that belong to our clusters. So in these two clusters, we're going to reappropriate the centroid right there because it's between the two points that belong to that cluster. And for this cluster, we're going to move it ever so slightly up here so that when we recreate the line based on how, which, which centroid this point is closer to, it goes like this. So now we have two clusters that are determining who are cat people and who are dog people. Now it's a pretty small data set. Normally we would iterate through many iterations or we would go through many iterations to determine what's the optimum groupings. So this is a pretty simple data set. Let's pretend that our data set's a little bit more weird and complicated. So that's really important to understand, because if, if your data is kind of organized strangely or your clusters wouldn't fall into this, you really want to apply the right technique. So let's move on to discussing density clustering. So in density clustering, the basic idea is you group people based on how close, how densely they're populated together. So if you have a lot of people that are closely related, they're considered to be a single group. The, the, more, the less dense they become, they're less likely to belong to the same group. So for example, usually the first thing they do is, is select a randomly a point. Like let's say we determine this point. And in most algorithms, you would want a minimum number of points around this point that are close enough to it to say that they're related, that they are now a group. So in this point, we have six points around it, five points around it, and so now we have a group of six that are all saying, okay, we're related. So now they want to know who else might be related to this group. So this point's part of it, so now it goes to the next point over and it says, are you close enough to me to be related? And if the answer is yes, then they're considered to be part of that group and so on and so forth until it's hit every point that meet, meets that criteria of being close enough. The distance to, from one point to the next is close enough. So then it goes through and it says, well, we have all these other points that we need to understand what clusters they belong to. So let's pretend for a minute that it picks this random point out here. As you can see, it's not very close to anything. So in most of these techniques, they would just be considered outliers and not part of any group. So then it would move on to the other points that have not been yet established. So let's pretend that we're going to this point here. And we have four points around it that are close enough to the center to be considered to be a group. So it goes through and does the same thing where it's like these five points have now become a group. They each go to the points next to it and say, hey, are we part of the same group? And if they are, they become part of the same group. So now we have this other cluster here like this. So this is how density clustering works. And I'd like to highlight, too, that when you have these kind of strange clusterings here, it is important, like this, this methodology would have never picked this up. 
So that's important to understand. Let's move on to distribution clustering. Distribution clustering is a pretty interesting technique. It basically looks at the probability that a particular point belongs to a cluster. So we know that we want three clusters. We want dog, fish, and cat people. We're going to fast forward a little bit to help make the point of how this one really works. So let's pretend that we know that we have three groups and their centroids are like so. So if we draw a map that basically is the density distributions of these points, basically if this centroid is this point, if you're a person that lands right here in the data, it's 100% probability that you're part of this group. The farther away you get from here, the less the probability is that you belong to this group. And so it, it works really well because you have, it's more of a probability that you belong to a particular group versus you are definitely part of this group or that group. For example, you have this guy out here that's a little bit of an outlier, kind of close to the dog people, kind of close to the fish people. And so this guy ends up having a probability that it belongs to any of these distributions. It might have a 53% probability it belongs to dogs, a 47% prob probability that it belongs to fish, and like a 0% probability it belongs to cats. So then you can determine where you want it to go based on your business needs. Maybe you want to say, let's advertise for both dogs and cats or something like that. You can be free to have a little bit more freedom of how to use that information. So next we're going to talk about connectivity clustering. And this is another interesting one uh, because you basically start with individual clusters. Each person is their own cluster. And rather than being determined by how close it is to a per particular centroid, we determine how much it's related to another individual. So for example, let's pretend that person J here uh, has a Labrador retriever and person K here has a golden retriever. The products that they buy are probably very similar, um, and therefore they're going to be very related to each other. In contrast, you might have a po someone, person H has a poodle, person I has a labradoodle. They're likewise going to be buying things that are very similar and can be clustered together. And in this dendrogram, what it's illustrating is that so, so these two are independently related to each other, but they're also more related to each other as clusters than they are to G, which is a person that owns a bulldog. They're going to be buying things that are different. So we would, we would cluster these two together, and then all three of these, all five of these are dogs, so we're gonna go ahead and cluster all of these together. And the same goes here. You have two different kinds of cats, you know, they're, they're more or less related to each other and it kind of, you keep going out and out more. And then eventually, I could put a circle around this whole thing because they all come to a point where everybody's part of one group. So the big trick on this one is determining where do you cut it off? How do you know um, how many clusters you want? It comes down to how many clusters you want again. So do you want to leave G just as an outlier or do you want to keep it as part of the group? So that's a basic overview of how clustering works and the basic techniques that you would employ to cluster groups together and why you might use them. And that's Data Science Wednesday. Thank you.